The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations Central Kitsap, Washington on your new fire apparatus, job number 30812. Please utilize this job number when referencing your vehicle with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting down at the front bumper, on the right and left side, you'll find forward-facing dual air horns. Moving just inside of that location on the face, you'll find closed tow hooks. Located in the center, mechanical siren, and just under that mechanical siren is a forward-facing perimeter lighting. Moving just to the right, you'll also find your electronic siren and PA control. Moving up onto the top of the bumper, you'll find access, which is a tub storage for hose for pre-connects. Moving up onto the body on the outer edge, you'll find your turn indicator. Moving just inward of that location, you'll also find the cluster housing the headlights. The outer beam is the low beam, and the inner beam is the high. Moving up from that, in the next cluster up, you'll find two emergency warning lights on the right and left side. And just above that, you'll find a grab handle on the right and left side. Moving up onto the front section, you'll find dual windshield wipers on the right and left side. And on the side, you'll find your mirrors, which house a flat and convex portion mirror on the upper section. Located on the brow of the vehicle at the very top, you'll find your running lights. Moving to the outer edges, you'll find two forward-facing right and left floodlights. Moving up onto the top, you'll find two light bars on the right and left side. And located over the driver's seat, you'll find your Opticom. Let's go ahead and take a look at just a slightly different angle here. You'll see on the side of the bumper, you have emergency side facing lights. And as you move up onto the body of the cluster, you'll find that turn indicator and also a bullet camera. Generalized view here, a little bit more of a close up of the top of the apparatus. You can see the Opticom and also those forward facing floodlights. Down at the base, a little close up here of the bumper to identify some of those items. Let's look at the very top of the bumper. You'll find an inch and a half discharge on the right and also on the left side. Take a look at the side of the apparatus now. As you can see, there are latches that have locking keyed entry points. Also from that, all points of entry will have a grab handle. Located in the Ford, you can see the identifying mirror. This is gonna be a flat portion on the bottom and convex on the top. Moving back to the compartment behind the operator and also behind the passenger seat, there is a shelf and lighting inside. Let's take a look underneath this section. You'll find the open and closed ball valve. This is for your driver's side auxiliary inlet. This is a two and a half inch inlet. Just to the right of that inlet, you'll find the water strainer. And then just to the right hand side, you'll find the water drain. As you can see on the left hand side here, this is the uh, opening to relieve pressure. This is your auxiliary side inlet drain. Let's go ahead and take a look at the very first compartment. We'll talk about the section of identifying placards on the left-hand side. First, some instruction placards, also your Pierce information maintenance schedule on your pump, and also just beneath that, a warning label regarding pressurized caps and the associated hazards when opening them. As you can see, the job number in the upper left-hand corner, pump in neutral, 150, 200, and 250 are test pressures, and governor test speed at 1970. Just inside that compartment, you're gonna find digital readouts for pressure and also intake. Just beneath that, you'll find a PTO pump engaged. This is an indicator in green. Moving down from this location, we're gonna find your pressure controller. There's an on off switch and also the ability to regulate that. 
digital readout on the right hand side. This is also the location of your tank to pump and a switch and also an amber light indicating. Your vehicle is equipped with the electronic Acron valves. This is cross lane number one. There is also cross lane number two and also a tank fill. Moving just uh, to the side of this location, you're going to find the pump drain and also an air outlet. Moving slightly up from this location, you're going to find your water level and auto, also your watchress placard with serial number and pump type. This is your primer for the fire pump, push to prime. You'll also find instructions in the lower section here regarding to ensure proper priming that you run your engine at at least 1000 RPMs. And just underneath that, you'll find the capped test and vacuum port for pressure and vacuum. In the upper left hand corner, you're going to find a digital readout here regarding your engine RPMs, oil pressure, engine temp and voltage. Just beneath that, you'll find an alarm disable switch. Just down from that, you'll find a, tra a check transmission indicator. This is the amber light on the right hand side. In the upper right hand corner, the black is going to be a speaker for your audible alarm. Just behind this placard for manual and auto pump override is where you'll find the mechanism for the manual and auto override. Let's go ahead and take a generalized view here of the side of the apparatus. You'll find two lights here. First, the first one indicating is going to be a side facing flood and the lower section smaller light is going to be an indicator for your outriggers. You also have an extension reel which houses the ability to hold 200 feet of extension line and I believe it is a 20 amp circuit. Looking underneath you're going to find your folding wheel chocks and also perimeter lighting. Let's take a look at the next compartment. Underneath that, you're going to find a pull-out style step with perimeter lighting for that step. And as we look into the compartment itself, you can see at the lower section here, you have an adjustable fixed shelf in this compartment and also perimeter lighting. At the very top, we're going to start with the left-hand corner in this compartment. Let's start first with your rewind button. This is for your reel, which is a 20 amp, 200 foot line. Moving just up from this location is the location you're going to find your APU system activated indicator light in green and also the switch for the APU system enable and disable. This is going to be your main panel. This is for the G1 panel, which is your generator. Let's take a look at the side. You can see here that you have G1, once again, indicating generator. These are all the individual breakers associated with that panel. Just beneath that location, you'll find your generator module. This is for frequency, AC volts, also for amps for line one and two. Just to the section lower than that, you're going to find your S1A breaker. And then moving to the far right hand side in the same compartment, you'll find this outlet when attached to shore power. Let's go ahead and move further down onto the body where we can find first your DEF fill location. This is a blue cap, 4.5 US gallons and we'll move now into the next compartment. Once again, that compartment houses a outlet. This is a close up here of the outlet. This is a generated outlet and it also is a 15 amp outlet. In between the rear wheels, you'll find bottle storage locations for three SCBA bottles and a fourth in the very lower section in the center. You'll also find in the silver cap your diesel fill location. Across the long compartment just up from that diesel fill is going to be a section here of flashlights. There are a total of six charging stations here for these flashlights. As we move to the next compartment down, I would like you to point to the very bottom section. This is the release mechanism to allow that shelf to pull outward. Just beneath that, you'll find your pads for your outriggers. And once again, this is going to be the outrigger light. Looking in between the steps, you'll find a front to rear inclinometer. You're also going to find some warning stickers here that indicate for crush, this is a moving item under pressure. As we move up to the top of the apparatus, we're going to move to the pedestal location. There are some warning labels on the right hand side of the pedestal also a handle for accessing the open section of this pedestal. There are also compartments 
two of them, a larger compartment and a smaller compartment access door. We'll talk about those in the next set of images. And at the very bottom, the foot pedal for the dead man switch. This is going to be the dead man switch here to allow your aerial operation. Let's move up to the actual pedestal. We'll talk about the components. First, on the left-hand side of the cover, you'll find some danger, warning, and caution labels. Just up on top of the cover, you're going to find specifications for setup per NFPA 1911 testing and also Pierce adjustment specifications. In the upper right-hand side, you're going to find your 105-foot steel aerial ladder load chart for a waterway that is wet or dry. We'll start actually the components here. First, we're gonna start with the uh, rung lights in the upper left. Moving down from that, this is your high idle indicator switch to turn on high idle, and then also a switch for your DC lights. Moving down, you have a test indicator. And as we move up to the very top, you also have generator controls from this location with a start switch and stop switch. The green light will illuminate when the generator is running properly. Just beneath that, you'll find this amber light indicating caution. Stabilizers are not fully extended. And beneath that, you'll find a rung alignment, which will flash on and off as you move through those long, uh, rungs. Just beneath that, you'll find your emergency hydraulic power. Located in the center, you'll find a placard regarding your generator operating instructions. And to the very far right, your hydraulic system pressure. Let's move down to the next section here. Let's first start in the upper left-hand control. This is going to be for nozzle control for stream and fog, and also lower and raise. Moving next to the large controls, you're going to find ladder control. First, starting with the extension. This is extend and retract. Moving to the right, you'll find your rotation. And then moving further to the right, you're going to find the lower and raise Located in the very top section here, this is the control module here for your speaker system for your audible communications to the front of the ladder. The very top speaker module, just beneath that are your controls for push to talk and volume control. Located near the pedestal on the ladder, you'll find this device indicating the degrees for your ladder. At the base of the ladder, you'll find an additional storage location. As we move to the ladder itself, on the outer edge, you'll find two lights on the right and left side, forward or tip facing, in addition with access under the ladder for your generator. Onto the top section here, you'll see on the left-hand side of the ladder, additional ladder storage for a roof ladder, and also on the opposite side, tool support. Looking inside the ladder, you'll find an additional long tool in this location, and at the very top, you'll find your bars indicating that your ladder is properly stowed when they have all aligned. Moving to the tip of the ladder is where you'll find your communication piece. There is also volume control on this module. As we move just to the right of that, you'll find this gray box, which is an outlet generated power. Looking off to the left-hand side of the vehicle on the cab itself is where you'll find your air conditioning unit. You'll also find additional top storage. Let's go ahead and move to the very rear section of the apparatus, starting first with the lower section. This is going to be the cluster housing the brake, turn, reverse, and emergency lights. There is also a switch here for your deck lights. Moving up from that location or slightly to the right, you'll find additional work lights. Moving to the very lower section of the back of the apparatus, you'll find two attachment points here. You're also going to find some additional warning and caution labels here regarding riding on and also electrical hazards. And at the very top on the right and left, you'll find emergency lights. Moving just inward, we'll find rear scene lights. Let's go ahead at this point and look all the way to the center at the very top. This is the location for your traffic advisor and then just up on top of the traffic advisor, you'll find the location of your backup or reverse camera. Moving down once again to the lower section, you'll find this side-to-side -side inclinometer, and then you'll find a variety of different access panels, and we'll talk about those next. First, let's move inside the large access door here in the roll-up compartment door, and on the left-hand side, you'll see that side-to-side -side inclinometer, 
and you'll also find that access door just to give you a sense of generalization of where we're at this is the large rear door you'll find once again a warning label regarding riding on the apparatus you can see in the upper corner you have your pike poles in addition with ladder storage let's go ahead and take a look at some of the items in close-ups this is your deck lights here moving just inward of that compartment you'll find two eight foots and also a 12 foot pike pole there are also some trash rubbish hooks and additional ground ladders on the right and left side with the indicator for the length of those ladders on the far right. We're now indicating the traffic advisor and just up from that traffic advisor once again is your backup camera. Let's go ahead and move to the right and left side. You'll find additional lighting here. And as we first look into the right and left sections here in those small access doors, you're gonna find a high idle switch emergency hydraulic power for your front stabilizer control and rear stabilizer control. Same goes for the opposite side, located in the center at the lower section. This is going to be the uh, aerial override. This is going to be for your hydraulic diverter and override controls. This is the aerial emergency power, emergency stabilizers. Select either way for which one you want to control. We're now on the passenger side. We're looking in that rear compartment. You can find additional lighting and also the ability for additional shelving. Underneath this compartment is where you'll find the storage location for your stabilizer platforms. We're now in the long compartment. You'll find just beneath that a location for diesel fill. Once again, silver cap. And in between the two wheels, you'll find three SCBA uh, compartments here and in the very center you lift up and you'll find an additional SCBA storage location. We're now looking into an additional compartment just up from those SCBAs. There are two adjustable shelves and as we move forward let's talk a little bit about some of the components within this compartment starting with the upper left hand corner. Uh, this is going to be your battery charger and at the very bottom this is going to be the cord rewind. This is once again a 200 foot 20 amp. This is the push button to rewind that reel. In that upper right hand corner was the auto charger 1200. This is when you're uh, powered by shore power. And as we move forward, we'll find an additional compartment storage, LED lighting inside and the ability for compartments. On the right, you're also gonna find your main exhaust from your engine and also the exhaust for your generator. Remember to be cautious in where you park. The extreme temperatures may cause a flammable situation. Generalized view here of your cord reel. Once again, 200 feet long. Looking into this compartment, you can see you have a top shelf at the very top in addition with two pull-out shelves. Uh, these are going to be roll-out style, which have the uh, cable here to release the mechanism. The lower section has an additional pull-out, and there's also a mechanism on the right-hand side. Down in the lower section here where the arrow is indicating, this is going to be your cab lift, and we'll talk about that in the next set of images. Let's take a look at the red. This is going to be the lower or raise function. On the left hand side is the activate. There is also a remote for controlling that so you can get a visual while you're moving that cab. On the lower right, that is that compartment lever to allow that to pull outward. There's also some instructions here regarding the cab lift operations. As we look forward of that location, we'll find an additional cluster here, same as the other side with the side facing flood and the outrigger light. Generalized view here of the side of the apparatus. Let's go ahead and now move to that forward compartment. Smaller compartment here, it does have LED lighting inside. And then we're gonna go ahead and look just uh, up from this location and you'll find once again, side facing lights on the cab itself. And then this is your air conditioning unit. We're now inside the cab here, passenger side, you'll find warning labels and caution labels regarding the use of seat belts. Down at the lower section in this black area, this is the control for your heating system. And as we look uh, to the very center of your apparatus, this is going to be the location for accessing uh, oil and transmission checks. And then just beneath the two seats located in the center, you'll find additional storage. This houses your uh, power inverter chargers. There are three of them associated with that. And this is the reason that that is a vented compartment. On each right and left side, you'll find LED light box charging stations. As you look inside in the small compartment, you'll find this pullout shelf with LED lighting. And as we look overhead, we'll find a speaker system and also your headsets. Generalized view here, looking into that small compartment for oil and transmission checks for daily. As you look forward, you're also going to find your siren control and PA system control. Generalized view here of the rear section looking forward. 
We'll talk about some of those components starting in the passenger seat. Once again, warning information here, please seek the advice of those as we look your vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system, SRS, and also a warning sticker here indicating not to block that SRS location. As we look to the very bottom section, you're going to find foot pedals for your air horn and also the electric siren. And on the seat itself, you'll find comfort controls here on the lower section between the legs of the person in that seat. The very far right hand corner, lower section right knee is going to be the location where you'd find the fill for your windshield wipers. Here's a generalized view of the cutout for your computer system. And as we look to the left, you'll find two 12 volt, one barrel style, one USB and at the very front, your vehicle data recorder port. Looking to the center, you're going to find your electronic brake monitoring system on the left. Just underneath that, you'll find once again a barrel style 12 volt and then just beneath that USB 12 volt. Moving up to the top here in the center, you're going to find your climate control for defrost and heat and also AC. Moving down from that, this is going to be your controls module for the siren and also your public announcement system. And then moving down from that, you'll find a set of switches. Some are future switches if you choose to add, but the main switch in this area is going to be a red switch, and that is the generator start and stop. Let's take a look at those components individually. Once again, this is going to be your siren PA system. Moving up from that, you're going to find your defrost, heat, and AC. And then you'll find over in the far left those two charging locations and also your MGM brakes, which is your electronic monitoring system. Let's look overhead. We'll talk about these components next. First, your Firecom wireless base station. Moving just up from this location is also the control system for your Firecom system. Moving just to the left, we're going to find your emergency master, driver side cab scene, front scene, passenger side cab scene, a future switch, body side cab scene, stabilizer placement lights, passenger side body scene. Let's look to the left hand side. You're going to find your all weather band radio CD player. This is also an MP3. Moving to the left of that, you're going to find your traffic advisor here, left, right, split and flash and a directional indicator. Located in the center, you'll find two fans. Let's go ahead and move now to the driver's seat. Generalized view looking into the driver's section here. We'll talk about some of the components here, but first let's take a look at the left-hand door. Once again, all points of entry are going to have these warning labels. Please take a look at those, and we'll talk about the components there. Also, as we look at the door face here, we have a handle, some electronic switches here for your windows and door locks, and also, uh, again, hazard and warning labels. Let's take a look at the latch assembly. I would like to point out that you can uh, lock the door when it is in the open position, so be cautious of that. We'll look down here at the lower section of the step moving into the apparatus. First, let's start with the auto charge status system. This is the left uh, red system and then a plug on the right. Down at the lower section, floor, air horn, and electronic siren foot pedals. And then I'd like to direct you to your yellow placard here. This is your manufactured by Pierce Manufacturing. It has the July 2017, the job number, gross vehicle weight ratings. It also has your VIN number and also fluid capacities for the component, fluid capacity and fluid type. Also the location of the VIN is on the A pillar located on the driver's side. Let's take a look now at the floor section area. Once again, generalized view, brake pedal and also accelerator. Let's take a look at the components here, starting at the top with the red. This is your master battery on off switch. You also have regen inhibit, ABS diagnostic. The green port here is for the engine ABS and transmission. As we look to the right, there's also a tech module and also DPF regen and engine diagnostic. As we look at the set of switches just above that, you're going to find window controls for passenger and driver's side cab windows, your electronic siren, air horn, and in red, the switch is going to be the siren brake. Let's go ahead and move to the opposite side of the steering column. This is where you're going to find the differential. This is your interaxle differential. There is a unlock and locked in red indicating that it is locked. Generalized view of the steering wheel looking forward. We'll talk about the components starting on the left hand side with first your hazard lights just beneath that start and ignition. 
As we move to the right, you'll find a small switch indicating EM, emergency master, your headlights, and panel lights. Generalized uh, turn signal here with wiper control and headlight flash. As we look at the general panel forward, we're going to find your transmission, oil, DEF, water, tachometer, speedometer, your volts, front and rear air, and also fuel status. There's also going to be some displays above and below the tachometer, speedometer. Let's move to the right hand side. This is the location of your OK to engage the high idle. It is a green indicator and there's the, uh, the high idle indicator switch. You're also going to find your pull to apply system parking brakes and also push to release. And on the very far right hand side, you're going to find your aerial hours. Let's take a look further to the right where we'll find our transmission pad and also all of the components associated on the dash. Let's first start with the Pierce manufactured. This is a information center that you can toggle through. A tremendous amount of information here right at your fingertips. Let's start at the very top with your aerial master, aerial PTO, your placement stabilizer lights, and a load manager. Down from that you'll find illuminated currently is your APU system disabled, APU system activated, your PTO for the pump, a future switch, and as we move down to the next set of switches you'll find your engine brake, an on off switch, engine brake setting for low, medium, and high, generator start, your off-road traction, mirror heat, and front wheel lock. There are also some caution and warning labels. To the right, or just slightly down to the right, you'll find your Allison transmission pad. And to the right of that transmission pad, you'll find your mirror controls for the flat and also convex mirror. Let's go ahead and look overhead of the operator. We'll find a set of switches, but first I'd like to direct you to the very left-hand side where you'll find this placard. This is your height, 11 feet, 8.25 inches, your length of your apparatus, 40 feet, 6 inches, and the gross vehicle weight rating of 37.40 tons. This also offers your job number in the lower left. Let's look overhead. First switch is your emergency master, roof light, front warning and side warning, lower rear warning, upper rear warning, high beam flash, and also your Opticom control. Let's move slightly to the right of this location. Once again, overhead of the operator, we're going to find your driver's side cab scene, front scene, passenger side cab scene, the deck light, also the body side, or section driver's side body scene, front white flash, passenger side body scene, and also the perimeter lighting underneath. Generalized view here of the cab itself. I would like you to direct you to the front and rear. This is for angle, right and left also. Located in the center, you'll find this puck style light when indicating or blinking. This is indicating you have a compartment or door ajar. We're now looking at the rear section inward to the cab. Let's take a look inside the large compartment here. It does have lights inside and adjustable shelving. Underneath the seats in the rear, you'll find LED light boxes and chargers. Outer seats are going to be a fold up style full seat. The inner seats are going to be your SCBA style design seats. We're back onto the top of the truck here. This is going to be your generator and also underneath there or onto the side, I should say, this is the hydraulic generator reservoir location. Underneath the cab front section, you'll find your front discharge. Uh, this is for draining those front discharges and just above that perimeter lighting. Congratulations, Central Kitsap, Washington on your new fire apparatus, job number 30812. If you have any questions regarding the content of this video or any future questions, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.